Today, uh, more about uh, bond graphs. You have been given chapter 5 on uh, the homepage in the material. So I'll go through that one today. It's actually quite uh, straightforward. I will also later today put out chapter 6. It's uh, just a couple of points in chapter 6 that we have to uh, take with us. And then we're actually done with the uh, ordinary uh, bond graph part in this course. Uh, we need, of course, a lot of examples, so uh, we will have more training, by all means. Also, you have been given exercise number three. <coughs> so, uh, just to have a peek on that one. <coughs> Here we go. A one-wheel uh, bike. And you are to design a shock absorber so that uh, you don't spill your martini. It's very important, of course. <coughs> and uh, the traditional simple shock absorber, it's just uh, a spring and a dash pot in parallel. Um, so start with the very simple one. A more advanced is drawn uh, to the right. There you will have uh, a dash pot here, but also a pressurized uh, air pocket in the bottom. So the actual uh, technical drawing for that one would now be uh, one big spring, and then a dash pot, and then another spring, like this. So you had two springs in uh, the one to the right. You might see the big spring outside uh, the uh, damper is not the drawn. I mean, this is just the inner cylinder of such a, such a damper. But the small spring is sort of hidden inside here then. But start with the simple one, and then you can always uh, later go to this one. I can uh, also give you a little hint <coughs> with this uh, problem here. When uh, you go a little further down in the problem, the ground will start to move. So, of course, when you are bicycling uh, with, uh, say, some speed, and if the ground is not constant, then you will feel a velocity source attacking you, going up and down. So, the actual bond graph <coughs> from such a system, it's not uh, so easy. So here you'll have a flow source attacking the ground when the ground starts to jump up and down. And the motivation for this uh, exercise is actually to show you that trying to set up the traditional equations of motion for such a actually quite simple problem using the traditional mechanical uh, tools Newton's law of motion that's a real pain it's not funny with this problem especially especially when the ground starts to move you have uh, quite a lot of different coordinate system uh, moving uh, in relation to each other so setting up Newton's second law of motion, nah, it's not uh, trivial. Try it. However, when you're doing with bond graph, it's very simple. So that's the whole point with this exercise, showing you that bond graph, ah, that's beautiful. Newton's mechanics, that's, that's terrible, awful. So that's the whole point. So let's see if you can, you can uh, learn that one. But something <coughs> that we haven't really learned yet, if we set up a bone graph here, <coughs> we can actually rapidly do it. Here you have something that moves with its own velocity, a one junction. Same goes here, a one junction. This one junction, this motion has mass attached to it. <coughs> then you add the mass. Uh, here you have a damper, add with a zero. Here you have a spring, add with a zero. Here we have another spring, another zero. 
like this. <coughs> and finally, gravity. The gravity is attacking uh, the person sitting on the bike. So here you will have an effort source attacking him. And then you have to join everything here, like that. OK, remove the background figure. What do you have? <coughs> Zero. Here I can simplify directly. I have two zeros next to each other. Join them. <coughs> then I will have a resistance and a spring here. Here also a spring. But here, these two will join together in a one junction attacked with a flow source. And uh, we haven't learned yet operating with what we call a mesh. This structure here, when you have something uh, circular, you might say, is called a mesh. Uh, we will learn later, if you have time today, I'll show you how we can uh, simplify this. For now, do the following. Take the ground down here and split the ground in two parts. But both are actually moving. But they sort of uh, imagine them separately, two different <coughs> flow sources. Much easier. Then it should look something like this. One junction, one junction, and then flow source attacking this one, and another flow source attacking that one. That one should be easier for you at this stage. But uh, please be my guest to, uh, to play around with it if you like. So the exercise uh, starts out here. First point, you let uh, a person just uh, jump up on the seat. And then after some oscillating motion, everything should uh, settle down. So uh, there you can decide uh, some of these parameters. Uh, how strong these uh, springs should be, what should the damping be, depending on, say, for instance, um, the height of the entire uh, shock absorber shouldn't be more than 10 centimeters, 20 centimeters, something like that. And the damping should be quite strong. After, say, four or five seconds, uh, the mo most of the motion should have slowed down and so on. So start simple. <coughs> Then you can play around with uh, with uh, some uh, sinusoidal uh, wave for the ground, harmonic uh, input, and finally a step input. So you are bicycling down a staircase or something. Just look at one single step and see how, how uh, the motion behaves. <coughs> OK. Any? Questions to that one? The exercise deadlines has been prolonged uh, to Mondays. Some said that a uh, little tough to have uh, guidance on Friday and then have to deliver the same day. So you have uh, the weekend uh, as well. OK. Also on. Um, the home page, under material, you have been given chapter 5. We will uh, peek into today. You have been given an exam attachment. This is something that was attached to last year's exam. So uh, here you can then see it's a lot of things you don't have to go and remember. You have it all here. And all the definitions, all the elements, everything. So uh, you don't have to have to memorize everything in this course. So have a look at it. Print it out and start using it. Then you get familiar with it. How the exam will be this year, I'm not certain yet. We might be uh, suffering from an experiment that this exam will be with computer. But that's um, something uh, yet to be decided.
is an option. Also, <coughs> you have been given um, a chapter from a book I found by a guy called Banerjee. That is the entire uh, bond graph uh, concept. Short description, one chapter. So if you prefer a quick and dirty uh, story, download and read that one. It's fairly straight to the point, actually. But uh, today, <coughs> chapter five, we skip then chapter four, that's rather boring. So uh, that was more with uh, regulation and control. So uh, we'll have a little bit of that later, but not much. <coughs> The start in uh, chapter 5, we have actually already covered, more or less. There you find the recipe, how you should uh, draw these uh, bond graphs <coughs> from a given problem. And uh, if we jump a little backwards here, we start with the mechanicals. Let's see here. <coughs> So there you have the working recipe for how to draw a bond graph with a mechanical uh, problem. So you start identifying, as he says here, mechanical junctions, meaning mechanical objects, uh, a plate, uh, something uh, where other elements are hooked into, that moves with a velocity of, of its own. Uh, identify him with a one junction. And if there's some mass attached to this uh, motion, hook it up directly. <coughs> Next, <coughs> every spring, every dash pot are inserted through a zero junction. What was that? Zero junction, common effort. You have the same force on each side. Yes, use a zero uh, junction to hook up uh, dash pots and the springs. <coughs> And then if you have uh, common uh, junctions next to each other, like you have here, just join them. Simplify them with one single. You don't have to do that. Say uh, for this problem here, I have a dash pot and a spring. And I'm very interested in what's the position at this point. I want to have this uh, behavior as a function of time. Then I'm going to need this position then I should not join these two. Then I should have sort of uh, inserted that one junction here actually to, the, to give me the speed and the position at this point. But uh, if I'm just interested in the overall motion here, then skip it. Then I can join them as, I, as I've done here. So sometimes you don't have to do these simplifications <coughs> unless you want to. And finally, eliminate all junctions from each only two bonds, uh, each only two bonds, and then uh, simplify it. Like it would have been here if, as you would start with this problem here, let the ground uh, be steady, no motion here. Uh, this uh, flow source is not present. Okay, <coughs> then you will have, uh, what will you have? Like this. <coughs> Uh, one junction here, but x dot is in zero. Uh -huh. If x dot is zero, then you have no power. Then uh, these bonds can be removed. You have a force acting on it, that's fair enough, but uh, it doesn't do anything. No motion. Zero power, so uh, you simplify a lot. These drops, and then you see this zero, he will drop. When he is gone, here you have only two bonds, he is gone. Uh, he is gone, but he has to stay. He has three bonds on him. So what will it be then? Effort source, one junction, I element, and then this spring, and then here the zero, and resistance, and another spring. I should have called them C1 and C2, of course, but 
that's your problem. <coughs> so uh, this is the mechanical uh, way to draw a bond graph. <coughs> we have the recipe here. So we will have a lot of examples uh, later on. Any questions to uh, the recipe? That's OK. Good. Then the chapter he starts with electric and then continue with fluid. And electric and fluid, they were very, very similar. Very similar indeed, the way of uh, thinking. So we can start here uh, with uh, an uh, electric uh, fluid. <coughs> each node, represent each node with a zero junction. <coughs> so here I have a battery or some kind, and then uh, here I have a resistance, and then I split uh, a capacitor, and here a coil. Join and join. Very simple uh, electric uh, uh, layout. So here, resistance, capacitor, and a coil, <coughs> inductor. No, normally in electric world you will use an L, but here of course we don't use L, we use an inertance. So how should we think? <coughs> I use blue color. These nodes, as uh, the book calls it, were actually physical junctions in a circuit. So here you will use a zero junction for these guys. Why? It will be the same voltage either uh, way you are looking. If you go uh, to the right, down, to the left, same voltage at this point. Same will be in a fluid uh, pipe system. So if you have a pipe here and then the pipe uh, branches, so say for instance, the fluid is moving here to the, uh, to the right, then some will continue straight, some will go down. I don't know uh, how much, but I have the same pressure at this point. So common effort at this natural junction. For the uh, elements, <coughs> a resistance, well, the current goes straight through it here, so you will represent him with a bond junction. The current goes straight through. Capacitor, bond junction, and also him, the coil, bond junction. <coughs> Even the source will be a bond junction. And then you join everything. Same with the fluid uh, world. Say here you have a valve of some kind. You have some resistance there. Small nozzle or something. Okay. <coughs> How should we uh, insert him into our system? Well, the fluid here goes straight through him. So yes, a one junction. <coughs> Definitely a one junction. For uh, the uh, electric uh, systems, <coughs> you can now choose wherever you want to put uh, any place in that diagram zero voltage or ground voltage. So uh, it doesn't have to be uh, at the bottom, but uh, that's a sort of a very, very common. And if you say, okay, the voltage is zero here, ground, then there is a zero power in all these bonds for, uh, that is directly connected uh, to the ground. So just remove them. So uh, what will be uh, the solution here? <coughs> Let's see, get rid of this. Let 
let's see. <coughs> I have a source hitting uh, one junction. Now, this one has been removed, this one has been removed, and then also, of course, this one, directly connected to ground, removed. So from this one junction, I go up and find another one junction, hooked up with a resistance, continuing, finding a zero, branches, I will go down to a one junction where I have a, a capacitor and then we continue here to another one junction where I have an inertance. And that's it. And now you see you can simplify a lot. Remove any junction with only two bonds. They make no uh, no junction at all. So just remove it. And uh, what are we left with? Well, I will have a source attacking a one junction with a resistance, continuing with a zero junction, where I have an inertance and a spring. <coughs> so that's my simplified bone graph for that one. <coughs> Any questions to that one? Okay, so you have sort of the recipe here. <laughs> Same goes with the fluid, <coughs> but uh, the fluid systems, of course, they don't have ground with a fluid system, but we have, uh, <coughs> we have the atmospheric pressure. So here the flow goes out, where you have uh, atmospheric uh, pressure equal to zero. Because we always operate with gauge pressure. So uh, everything is relative to the, uh, to the atmospheric pressure. So this is sort of the same ground level as we have with the electrical systems. Okay. <coughs> That was uh, sort of the different uh, recipes that we have here. We can uh, try to come up with a more complex problem here. You have some examples. You can play around or have a look at them yourself. They're fairly straightforward. These guided problems, they can be uh, well worth uh, a peek. They can be quite good. <coughs> Here also you see you have this mesh that I spoke about from exercise uh, three. Uh, further reduction is possible. Okay, so we have to look into that one. So let us try. Yeah, ideal machines doesn't change anything actually. Ah, skip that. We will create our own. Uh, our own uh, problem here. <coughs> so this figure, I think it was the first figure I showed you, first lecture in this course. So we have uh, wind uh, hitting an, a wind turbine, <coughs> generating electricity. And uh, we use this electricity to pump up uh, water up into a reservoir. Any additional uh, uh, power, electrical power, we can use to heat up the water. And then finally the question, how long can you take a shower? How much hot water do you get? So let's try that one. Example. <coughs> so we start with the wind hitting a generator, producing electricity. Then we will have, uh, if we make it simple first, 
directly coupled to a motor connecting to a uh, pump fluid pump that can lift uh, fluid up to a reservoir like this and then we have a hole here down to our uh, shower <coughs> So that will be the short version. Now, <coughs> some of you may um, may raise a question here: Is this one problem, or is it two, or is it are they coupled? Is it uh, one sin single, uh, say, a connected problem? Well. <coughs> Actually, it's not. If you look at this part, how much water you have in this storage tank, it's not felt by the rest of the system. Since here I let the pump go up and just drop the water in, into this uh, bucket up in the air. But uh, how much water we have here, it's not uh, interesting. The pump doesn't feel that at all. So this it's a little bit too easy problem. Let, let make, let's make the problem a little bit worse. We do it like this. Now they are coupled. Now the pump will actually also feel how much uh, water is in that storage tank. Uh, this uh, motor motor will uh, swallow so and so much of the electricity any additional electricity should then go here <coughs> and then we have an electric resistance here uh, heating up the water also there is a question how you should uh, model this, how we should uh, program this. Mm, maybe an if sentence there, we don't like it, but maybe we have to. Let's try. <coughs> how can we uh, model this one? First of all, <coughs> we have given uh, this uh, velocity of the wind, u, as a function of time. So this one is given. Of course, then it's a very complex problem. What uh, torque do we get uh, here in a rotational uh, world? Ah, that one is not easy. If you look at the details, wind flow around uh, a turbine uh, propeller, <coughs> very, very complex indeed. So here, of course, we will simplify. We mod model it like this torque is given directly as a function of this velocity. And uh, I think you've seen this one before. It will be proportional, uh, how do you write that? Proportional to the velocity to the power of three. <coughs> it will be uh, directly or linear with the density. So, uh, if it's uh, air and water, fair enough. Water is uh, 1,000 more heavy than, than air. So a water turbine instead of a wind turbine would be much more efficient. But the electricity produced will go as the torque to the power of three. Uh, sorry, the velocity to the power of three. So uh, the wind speed will be much more heavy, much higher than uh, say the, the uh, the velocity in a tidal current, for instance. So wind, more energy than in the uh, tidal current, normally. Uh, okay, never mind. We have to assume that we know this function is given, so we know the torque here. Then we have a generator here, producing electricity. So uh, what will it be? We have a source giving a torque. 
that must be our first uh, working point here. And this torque, well, that's an effort. Hence, yes, I have an effort source. And uh, how will this uh, electric generator operate? Well, he will be a machine. And we say he's an ideal machine, no loss of power. So he gives us electricity on the other side. So uh, then it's a question, is it a transformer or a gyrator? Well, let's see, what do you get on the other side? Here I, uh, here I am in the electrical world. So here you will have uh, voltage, U, and current uh, on pad. <coughs> And what is the uh, connection? Well, that depends how this one is constructed. So, uh, this one, somebody has to tell us, T or G. Several ways to do this. I don't know. There you have to ask uh, the shop, the manufacturer, what he has uh, given us or what he can provide us. So, uh, that will <coughs> depend on, on the problem. Okay, let's continue. <coughs> Here we then have electric into a motor that now goes back into the rotational world on the other side. And uh, again, that's a question. How is this motor uh, 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 set up? Also a question, is it a direct current or, uh, I mean, AC-DC, uh, what is this? Uh, normally it will be an, an AC uh, electricity here, alternating current, but it could be direct as well. Okay, never mind that. <coughs> that was our motor. And from the motor we have a rotational uh, speed then uh, with a one junction and this one hits a pump well a pump he will also now act as either a transformer or a gyrator because what do you get on the other side well that will be a question if uh, we have a coupling that says, um, say, if he goes one round, one rotation, then you have, uh, he will, uh, the pump will be able to push so and so much water. Uh, that's what we call a displacement pump. So then you will have a direct coupling between uh, the rotational speed and the amount of water flowing. <coughs> uh, also the torque then direct couples with the pressure. But it doesn't have to be. You have other uh, pumps as well where you can have a coupling given a rotational speed. Aha, uh -huh, then you get this much uh, pressure on the other side. So again, it's uh, also a question how this one is uh, designed. We don't know. Then we are raising him a certain height. What do we call this height? We call him H. And here I have, well, I skip the uh, resistance and also the inertance in this uh, pipeline. Ah, maybe that's too bad. Maybe we should have it. Say I have a one junction with fluid and this one junction has inertance, it has resistance. Furthermore, it's sort of been attacked here by uh, an uh, elevation. We have to lift him H. How can we do that? Well, we can sort of uh, use a source, an effort source, and say that he's attacked with an rho g h pressure <coughs> and whether you want him to be lifted or going the other way that's your choice simply with a plus or minus there 
So that's something you can play around with. Continuing, I have a storage tank here. That is a C element in uh, fluid, like that. And then we continue going uh, out <coughs> here. And uh, finally, you have the shower. That must be some resistance. You have a nozzle there. And uh, then the fluid just goes out where the pressure is uh, zero. So uh, you don't have to do anything more, actually. You can stop there. <coughs> The temperature for the water, well, that would be a question if you have any additional uh, power left here. Say, if uh, the storage tank is full, then of course we don't uh, waste uh, energy trying to push more water into a tank that is completely full. So then we take this part and then we connect him to another electrical resistance directly and then we can calculate the heat. So there you should have uh, more or less a bond graph for uh, this problem. You see many questions has to be answered. How are uh, the different elements uh, defined? But uh, once they have been decided, sure we can make uh, a bond graph here, finding the uh, equations, and hopefully simulate the entire problem. Any uh, questions to that one? <coughs> That's okay. Yep. You want to include uh, the resistance to heat the water? You should add also um, a one junction, right? Here, you mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah yeah, you should. Let's see how how this part actually then looks. You will have the source hitting a either transformer or a girator hitting a one junction uh, where you have a resistance and then you will have actually zero or ground or whatever you call it. So he will drop anyway. And also then you see this one junction will drop, he will fall. Where is the motor? Uh, where is, what, sorry? The motor. No, I, I have uh, skipped him. I mean, when the tank is full, then I'll let all the electricity heat up the water. Okay. Yeah. Uh, then also here you maybe want to have a uh, if sentence. If you have a lot of wind, and you are not so uh, clean, you haven't showered in a couple of weeks, then the tank is full and all the electricity goes to heat up the water and it will start to boil and evaporate. So maybe you should stop. Also taking a shower in 100 degrees uh, water is a bad idea. So uh, maybe some if sentences here would be proper. Other uh, questions? <coughs> So uh, this could typically be a uh, project work if a group would like to do something like this. Say you have a cabin up on the mountain and you want to uh, have uh, hot water. Okay, you have a pond, uh, small lake uh, nearby where you can pump up water. Then you can design such a problem like this. And that could be a nice problem. <coughs> Using solar energy, okay, you could then do that one as well. But how much sun do we have in uh, Trondheim? Mm. Wind, much more uh, reliable, I think. <coughs> yeah. More losses, ah, you can read it if you are interested, but it's rather boring if you ask me. <coughs> Geometrical constraints, pull the example. 
Uh, pull in. This can be a little bit uh, tricky. Something you should uh, be aware. <coughs> <coughs> So uh, here <coughs> you have uh, a mass hanging in a pulley and here a string attached to the ceiling and on the other side you have a spring and then attached to the ceiling. So this one now can uh, jump a little up and down. This wheel will then uh, may have a rotation and uh, clearly it will have uh, an angular momentum there. It will have an inertia, angular inertia. The mass down here, he will just uh, moving up and down, so he's not he's not a problem. How should you model this one? How should you uh, describe that one mathematically in a bond graph uh, world? Uh, maybe uh, not so easy. So the classical mistake a lot of people do with uh, this uh, problem is that the rotational center of this wheel the uh, say the uh, urigu of rotation is the center no it's not it doesn't rotate around this point it rotates around this point you see <coughs> i mean you all tried a yo-yo in your youth haven't you and as I said uh, earlier, take a look at the bicycle going by you. The bicycle wheel on the ground. He doesn't move around this point. He moves around this point. This point is fixed. And then the entire move is, is uh, in motion. So <coughs> this is the rotational point, actually. That's a, uh, <laughs> an important difference. And uh, the rotation around here, when you want to calculate this angular uh, uh, momentum, uh, the inertia for a rotating uh, object, well, it's quite different whether you use this as a, an, a center of rotation or the uh, actual center as a center of rotation. You get two completely different answers. So that one is something you have to be aware of. So you have a pulley example here. Not uh, necessarily so, so, so trivial to, to solve. I believe this one was given as an uh, exam some years ago. I'll put out some uh, old exams for you so you have something to look at. Yeah, and then you have a long, long list of guidelines. Some uh, hints how you should model uh, your uh, world, make your life easy. Some uh, 10 points. Yeah, you can have a look at it if you like, but in my experience, the more training you have, the more uh, examples you do, more uh, ex exercises you do, the better. So instead of reading the theory, we should start doing it. Any questions? <coughs> we take a break. <laughs>